Eventide's Ultra Channel is a really unique, modern, full-featured channel strip. After the input stage where we can optionally invert phase and adjust the input level, we have a gate, two compressors, and a five-band EQ section that can easily be reordered by simple drag and drop. These modules are then followed by a micro pitch shift effect, which is fantastic for doubling and thickening. And then stereo delays, a pair of delays that can be set either manually or by tempo with individual level feedback and pan controls. The gate section features simple and intuitive threshold and release settings. And as well, it can be triggered by a sidechain signal routed to the plugin's sidechain input. Now, the compressor features all the usual controls, but as well, it's got a saturation button that activates a soft saturation at the compressor's output after its gain control down here. And it's also got a dedicated de-esser circuit to set and compress specific frequencies in the high end to tame sibilance and vocals or cymbals or high end content like that. And it's got intuitive threshold, ratio, attack, release, makeup gain, and knee settings to smooth out the onset of the compression once the signal exceeds the threshold. Now, the Opressor is a single knee version of Eventide's Omnipressor, known for very aggressive character style compression. We can bring each of the modules in and out with these toggle buttons, and there's a sidechain function that allows it to listen to and react to a signal other than the channel strip that this is placed on. Now, here again, we have threshold, ratio, attack, release, and makeup gain controls. And the bass cut sets the corner frequency of an internal high-pass filter so that low frequencies like bass drums or bass won't trigger the detection circuit. Now, the five-band EQ is full-featured. We can adjust the bands directly from the graph or with the values here. And we can set the filter types. And there's two types of peaking filters. Modern peak features an asymmetrical Q type of parameter where the boost is broader than the cut. So you can see here, as I dial this up, we have one Q setting, and as I dial lower, it becomes narrower compared to when it's set to classic peak and maintains the same width at the same values. And we have additional filter types for the first and last bands. When set to high shelf or low shelf, we can adjust the gain and the center frequency and then use the Q to get a nice bump at the center frequency. But we also have the option for a gentle 6 dB per octave slope or a steeper 12 dB per octave slope where again the Q acts as a bump at the cutoff point. And we can always go back and simply option click any of these parameters to set them to their default values. Now the micro pitch shift is routed after each of the modules in this upper level but it's before the output stage, and it runs in parallel with the stereo delays. The size control adjusts the amount of pitch shift that's applied to each voice. Width is used to change the panning spread from mono to stereo, and the depth scales the total spread of the delay signal further back in time as it's higher up or closer together as it's lower down, and finally a dry wet mix control. Now the stereo delays not only have independent values for delay level and feedback, which can be optionally synced to tempo or not, or set manually, but it's also got the unique ability to feed the signal back into any other of the modules in Ultra Channel so that you can easily add filtered, duct, or gated delays to any signal simply by setting your feedback destination in each of these independent menus. So let's see what this all sounds like in action. Here I've got several instances of Ultra Channel across a multi-tracked drum kit. Here's what it sounds like with all of these instances engaged. And bypassed. So let's take a look at them one at a time. Here on the overheads, I've got some simple EQ with a boost in the lows and highs and a little bit of a dip. Gain staging on the way in and then on the way out. So just some subtle EQ. Now the kick drum is starting with the gate to get rid of the snare leakage. And then I'm using some of the oppressor 
very subtly with some bass cuts so that the lows aren't getting truncated. And a boost on the lows and then the highs for some click. And again, some gain staging on the way in and out. Now the snare drum has the oppressor after the EQ. Here I'm doing some EQ with a couple of modern peak dips for the contoured dip in the width. And some oppressor with fairly slow attack so the transients get through. It's without it. And with it. And I am boosting the gain here. Now I've got a parallel drum bus and here I've got the oppressor set very aggressively and some subtle EQ dips without it and with it. Now on the reverb I'm going to solo it for you. I'm going to bypass this so I've got some SP2016 with a long plate. And here I've got the side chain set to listen to the snare drum with the gate at the longest release. So that the reverb isn't too messy at the end. And I can shorten it for a real gated reverb effect. But I want it more natural sounding. So once again, all off and all in. Here on the bass, I've got a lot of aggressive compression with both of these and a lot of output gain. Now on the output, we have a transformer that can be driven into saturation. It comes after the gain here. So with this in, we can drive the transformer sound. Here I've got Ultra Channel on the lead vocal. I've got some fairly steep EQ cut for the low end to clean it up and a bit of a boost up here just to brighten it. And I'm using both compressors. I'm boosting the input gain. Some subtle compression here. A little bit more with the oppressor. So it brings out not just the level balancing, but the nice crisp tone, particularly the oppressor. Now here I'm using the micro pitch shift as well, and the stereo delays. And here I'm using this with a relatively small size for not too much pitch shift for it to be subtle. Just a little bit of panning and a little bit of spread. And here it is without this. You go and count. And with it. You go and count. And then some longer delays that are routed back to the EQ so they get thinner over time. And they're set to different rhythmic values with a fair bit of feedback. Now I'm sending the signal to Shimmerverb followed by Ultra Channel. Now this ultra channel is set to listen to the lead vocal as the side chain. Now without this, we're going to hear a big sloppy reverb. You go and count. It's lovely, but it overpowers the vocals. Now with this, I've got the oppressor in with the side chain so that I can get a bloom for the reverb once the vocal is finished. You go and count. So it's fairly clean when the vocal is singing and then it blooms after with those nice stereo delays feeding into it. The short attack time and the longer release control the shape of the balloon. Here on this Rhodes, I've got the oppressor before and the compressor after the EQ. I'm running this fairly hard. And with the low shelf, you can use the cue to get a nice resonant bump at your cutoff point. So 
I'm shaping that and then using some more compression after. Micro pitch shifting or thickening. Nice stereo spread. And then longer delays here. Fed back into the compressor. Without it. And with it. And to add character, I've got the soft saturation engaged as well as the output transformer. That's Ultra Channel from Eventide. 